Swipe Up, episode 240, the podcast where I share my unfiltered thoughts on the latest news and entertainment updates. I am your host, Ray Taylor. Florida immediately sees the consequences of the new anti-immigration law. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed the new immigration legislation into law that could affect employment and health care for those who, uh, without proper documentation, the law expands requirements for use of the E-Verify, a system that determines if uh, employees can legally work in the U.S. and imposes tougher penalties for knowingly hiring or transporting undocumented in their state. The new immigration laws signed by Governor DeSantis in Florida have sparked concern amongst immigrant advocates in Central Florida. These advocates have been actively opposing the passage of these laws for months, but are now shifting their focus towards educating people on how to navigate the new regulations. The impact of these laws extends beyond the approximately 775,000 immigrants without documentation in the state and affects all Floridians, as we've seen. One of the concerns raised is that the laws will create barriers for individuals seeking medical attention. The transportation of individuals without documentation in Florida is now considered a felony. So if you are an Uber or Lyft driver and your passenger can't prove their citizenship, you, the driver, can be charged with a felony. Hospitals are required to collect immigration status from patients. So if you're sick and you have melanin in your skin, make sure you have your documentation. It doesn't matter if your parents, if you've lived in this country for generations. Doesn't matter. If you look like you are from somewhere else, you have to prove your citizenship before you get medical treatment. So if you have any kind of melanin in your skin, make sure you have your papers because that's the that's the world DeSantis is making in Florida. Anybody that's not pale is going to have to prove their citizenship. Meanwhile, if you're Canadian or Russian, you're from the UK, you're from Australia, maybe don't speak in an accent, but I don't think they would even care. That's the, they're clearly targeting specific people. And it's hilarious. All of the conservatives, the Latino conservative community in Florida, how they're, you know, their elected officials, the party they select is going to make their lives a living hell because they don't know. You can't tell. You can't tell somebody what they voted for just because their skin color, but that's what they're attacking. That's what exactly what they're attacking. Businesses are penalized for hiring individuals who are in the country legally. Uh, so you can see construction sites empty, service industry, hotels, resorts empty, no staff, farms, right? Crops just dying, rotting in the ground because there's nobody there to pick the crops. And you don't you definitely don't see any of these white people that are crying about their jobs being stolen, you know, picking themselves up by their bootstraps and going to do all that work. Not seeing any of that happening. Advocates argue that these laws will lead to labor shor a labor shortage as immigrants play significant role in industries such as agriculture, construction, hospitality, and health care, which are crucial to for Florida's economy. So now is the time we all see those racials cry, the, the, the racists, <laughs> who cry about immigrants taking their jobs, not doing anything. Uh, you know, you see TikToks of truckers that are boycotting, shipping anything into or out of Florida, not wanting to drive in Florida. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're legal or not. Just being a human being with brown skin is enough for them to harass you. Is all the, enough for them where you have to prove... It doesn't matter if you've lived in America for generations. Your your great 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 grandparents are from America. Because you have melanin in your skin, you must now in Florida prove you are a citizen. Whether you want to ride in an Uber, whether you want to get medical, whether you're driving down the street.
DeSantis thinks this will save the taxpayer money, but in reality, it will crush the economy. It will kill tourism. And he's still in a fight with Disney, too, who just shut down massive development. Like, anybody that thinks Ron DeSantis is a good politician is doing what's best for society. Anybody that thinks Ron DeSantis is a reasonable choice for president, Joe Rogan, fascist Joe Rogan, you're insane. You're insane. I don't know what kind of propaganda you're seeing to make you think that DeSantis is a good choice. But it it's clearly not working out well for him. And I would say there's an independent movie called A Day Without a Mexican, a satirical comedy, drama, film, released in 2004. The film explores the, uh, hippo, uh, the hypothetical scenario of what would happen if all of the Mexicans in California suddenly disappeared. Another state, state I live in, that has a lot of agriculture, the entertainment industry, the um, you know hotel resort industries, all these kind of same industries that also exist in California. We benefit from immigrants far more than most states, but it's it's handled right. We're not making them. We're not like making their existence uh, unlivable, right? A great movie, though. But in the, So the, everybody, all the Mexicans disappeared, leaving the state residents, authorities, and businesses in a state of... Like, if you want to see what DeSantis is turning Florida into, watch this movie. Because this is what's happening. Right? Because all these businesses, confused, chaos... The film takes a humorous and thought-provoking approach to examine the social, economic, and cultural impact that the Mexicans have on California and the United States as a whole. The state's agricultural industry collapses as crops go unharvested, <laughs> Mexico, leading to food shortages and epic economic turmoil. Businesses struggle to find employees to fill vacant positions, highlighting the s significant role Mexicans play in the labor force. The film also sheds light on the stereotypes, prejudices, and misconceptions that surround the Mexican community. Overall, A Day Without a Mexican offers an imaginative exploration into the consequences that would, fa that would arise if an entire demographic suddenly vanished using comedy to address deeper social issues. Leave it to the Republican Party to turn their reality into a comedy, whereas Trump created idiocracy DeSantis is creating a day without a Mexican sources for this story is wesh.com thank you for tuning in to another episode of swipe up I hope you enjoyed my thoughts and insights on the latest news and entertainment updates please join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube and I'll see you next Thursday for more unfiltered opinions and fresh perspectives and remember if you don't agree with me you don't have to threaten to shoot me New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Ouch! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.